can see Barzola on the front foot here. He certainly feels like he can turn things. Oh, oh boy! They're still Ooh, nice guy. flashing right here at the center of the smart cage. Collard shrugging it off. Got his hands down. Right hand landed and dropped him. Oh, man, that's what you work for right here. You ready? Ready? It's good work. Daniel James in the blue trunks, Marcelo Golm in the black. Contest. What do you have, Brett? Yeah, thank you, Sean. Marcelo Gohm has had a full year now to think about this. 13 months ago, as you guys have mentioned, he lost to Daniel James in the fight that he was winning the first two rounds. And I spoke to his coach, Conan Silvera, who said it was really just focus is what the problem was because the fight before that, he had actually came back. He had a bad cut against Davian Franklin, but he won that fight in the third round. So Conan says, I know what this guy can do late in a fight. He is as dangerous as anybody in the third round, but he just lost focus. If he stays focused for 15 minutes tonight, there's no way Daniel James beats him. So we'll see if he's right here. Well, he grabbed the body lock. And the outside trip to get Daniel James onto his back here in this first round. James gets the underhook, trying to elevate himself. Gomes still controlling on top. Yeah, great top position by Gomes right now. Now you had the right idea with the underhook. He needed to scoop in his hips the way, utilize the case to walk up the case to try to get away. Right now, he's taking some heavy left hands. Marcelo Gomes hammering away with those short hooks. Very happy looking on closely. Give me the underhook on the left side. Gold sitting in the half guard, the using that right side underhook under and letting that side. left hand go on the face of Daniel James. Up, under hook. James best bet in this situation is to get two hands under on that hook. one wrist, his left wrist, yes, and really up. utilize that to get his right hip out you and press it. his back against the cage to start walking up. He has to clear that bottom right leg. I need your knee in his waist, left knee in his belly. Shrimp, left knee in his belly. Corner of Daniel James calling for him to get his legs more involved in this fight. Yes. Dane has a right idea by having two hands on one wrist, but he needs to really escape that bottom right leg and get his butt away towards the cage so he can get a base to escape. Gohm negating that possibility by hooking his own right leg elbow. underneath that one right Daniel James. There's the underhook that James needed now. He can, should be able to use that fence and walk up and get his back to his feet. But now elevation is his enemy because Golem has got elevation and going to rain down some big shots. Nasty series of uppercuts there from Marcelo Gohm. Daniel James has this body lock. Gomes should get his feet underneath him. Yeah, Gomes should grab both of his legs and lift him up. And scoot, scoot it off his base. Gomes going to full mount. Drives his Got a hand trap. James' is cage locked up and almost out, but Gomes scrambles back to the top. again! James is doing a fraction of things correct to get away. But he has a committed explosion to get to his feet once he does it. Hammer fist from the bottom. The fist was flashing as hammer fist come down from the top as well. Keep your shoulder. Get your knees. Up. Get to your fucking feet. Take it down. Single leg here for James. Uses that head to lever over. And now he's got Golm on his backside. Him, nice right reversal hand. by Daniels. Go to his back. He needs to Go attack Holmes' left wrist and the bring it so he doesn't have a base. Look at these big right hands. There we go. Daniel James turning the tide in this final minute of ground number one. Big shots under, under the armpit. Under the armpit. Big right hand, Daniel. Keep your weight on. Use those knees. Yeah. Right hand, wrist control. Wrist control. Gold needs to get wrist control. Get wrist control first so you can stop the punches from coming in. James needs to either attack the ankle or the wrist to kind of flatten them out. Gold's got to stand up. He's got to just explode and stand up. He can't concede that position. He already saw the fight stop with some paper cuts earlier, so he has to defend himself. Three or four more. 
Ryan's arm to move himself out of there. Three or four more punches, they're going to step in. The right hand of Daniel James continuing to do work. Ten seconds. Can Marcelo Dome survive the final ten seconds of this first round? Dome is done. He's done. So Billy out. That's it. That's it. That's it. Daniel James at the buzzer. At the buzzer. First round finish. What a comeback! Literally a few seconds left. Round two. Round two. Henry Barzola is in the white trunks. Adam Boric in the black. Fascinating back and forth, and it begs the question: How should it have been scored? Big John McCarthy is the right man to ask about that. I don't know about the right man, because that was a great <laughs> round. Look at Adam Borch was dominating that round. His jab was on point. He was tearing up Barzola. I honestly think what really hurt him was a clash of heads uh. that put Borch in trouble, but it was not called. So you got to look at it as a legal blow. And everything that happened after that, Barzola took the round 10-9 incredibly close. Nasty left hook from Borch has once again motivated some heavy swings here from Barzola. Voice of uh, AJ McKee, who's reporting on the corners. What'd you get between the rounds? Big key that I heard Robbie Lawler telling him is stick and move. You know, he, he's sticking and moving, and that's what's creating his angles for his, his good shots. That's where he's landing most of his strikes, is off the angles. So he doesn't want to get in a brawl, but continue to keep the angles and stick and move. Is AJ or McKee good at everything? <laughs> it seems to be. He seems to be good at everything. He's probably not good at basketball. I'm just going to guess. <laughs> He's telling you he's good at basketball, Sean. I wouldn't disagree with him. You can see Barzola on the front foot here. He certainly feels like he can turn things. Oh, oh boy! Nasty work from Boric! Barzola trying to wrestle out of it. Is he going to recover? Oh, my goodness, his legs are gone. Trying to get back to his feet, doing the dance. On knee. Wow. Uppercuts and hooks from Boric. Barzola. Barzola's in big trouble. He's trying to work his way around the cage, looking for a respite and cannot find one. But he is back on his feet. It was the 1-3 combination the first round, and he caught him with that two in the second. Barzola's still in trouble, not quite stable yet. In 29 fights, he has never been knocked out. The right hand again. Dangerously close. And now Barzola with the duck under <laughs> on the back. Wow. Nice work. And drags Boric down, but he gets too high. No hook, no anchor from Barzola. Boric able to stand up and shrug him off. Look at the fight in Enrique Barzola. Tough as nails. Still on storm. Another level goodness. change in a takedown. <laughs> this is going to buy him a second to clear his head. And you can see Boris now taking some deep breaths. He really put his foot on the gas. There's the blue corner. Uh, no, that is Boris's, uh, excuse me, Enrique Barzola's corner with Cain Velasquez at an American Kickboxing Academy. And if I know someone that can take a massive punch and keep wrestling, yeah. Cain Velasquez is the guy. <laughs> Bilingual corner there. I'm not good at listening to coaching in one language. No. I would be lost if it was coming at me in two. This is good for Barzola here to clear his head. That was a bad knockdown. I mean, I don't know what he would have to do in the next minute to be able to win this round back, but that was a huge, huge statement from Boric. Barzola's got a pass to mount for right. Barzola. This might be the right step. He might be able to force an arm triangle here, Sean. Oh! Good explosion there from Boric. Use the space. 
And now he gets right back to work with the hands, but he wow. slipped on the knee. And the right hand from Barzola coming down. Did somebody tell me before this started, might be Sneaky the fight of the night? <laughs> who, who said that? He was probably AJ McKee. <laughs> oh, and another slicing shot through the center line. An absolute piston of a right hand there from Barzola. Gotta watch those up kicks. Giving it the respect it deserves. Maplata. Another up kick attempt there from Borage. One last right hand from the top. Last round. Third. You heard the referee. Last round. Blagoy Ivanov in the black. Sergey Bilostini in the blue. Sean O'Connell. Tyron Woodley, Randy Couture, cage side. Big John McCarthy joining us remotely. And real quick, Big John, how do we score round two? You know, going to round two, I got to give it to Bill Estenio. He landed the cleaner shots, especially the body shots. It was a big difference. He actually hurt for going in that round. So 10-9, I have it an even fight going uh, into this third round. So kind of a cool moment when you look and you think, I've got three commentators that I was able to referee all three calling this great heavyweight fight. And you guys are the very best, Randy, since he just laughed. He's, he's definitely my favorite. <laughs> he's my favorite too, Big John. It's fine. Bye, right, brother. Good to see you, man. Great stuff, as always, from Big John. Now, Sergey Bilostini grabs the underhooks and marches Bloodway Utah back to the cage. But you do not want to be here. Wearing the weight. Even off need to put one heavy knee down. The wrestling who slam one knee down to try to get him on all fours. Make him carry a weight. When Bill Billisoni is looking at the mat, he cannot see where the hips of even off is going. Make him carry a weight and to come up swing. Put it in. Let's go. The mouthpiece came out. Bill <laughs> steady looked at it and nodded like, yep, that's mine. <laughs> Fatigue showing on both of these fighters, but they're still Ooh, nice guy. flashing right here in the center of the smart cage. McCoy Ivanov is like a Terminator. He just keeps yeah. coming. It's like a zombie. He does not care. He's coming forward. Billistoni need to stay on the jab, keep distance, and try to get back to the body. Ooh, nice. Oh, it was a hard left oh. There he goes. He's going right back to the body. Oh, nice slip. Right underneath that left hand that has landed so many times for McCoy even on. Good head movement there from Sergey Villastani, but not able to land any offense back. We're not even halfway through the round, guys. And we said it during the break, Tyron Woodley, that gas tank is what matters here because these, these two men are very evenly matched skill-wise. Good jab from Sergey Bilostini. Snaps the head back. He's going back to the technical side. Slipping and ripping. Hard jabs. Digging to the body and moving his head. Even off head is not moving. See, he's right there in the middle. He has to move his head to the side to try to get it, get an advantage from the outside. Back, back on the jab. Left hand of Sergey Bilostini. Off balance is Bloodway Ivanov. And the right eye is starting right off the jab. Yeah. Just under two minutes now. Ooh. And what Big John McCarthy Man. thinks is the deciding round. Sergey Bilostini with the great shot selection. Staying fresh. There's another jab. Ian Parker, Sergey Bilostini is accounting well for himself here in round number three. How you feeling? 
I'm still rolling even off. He is, I like what Randy said, he's the Terminator. He keeps coming forward. I think he's up 2018 going into this round. He got rocked early on. He rocked Bill Stay at the end of the second round. He landed more, landed the harder shots, controlled against the cage. I think the Terminator's just gotta keep going through and push that pace for the last minute. This round's closer, but I think Ivanov's getting it done. The right eye of Blagoy Ivanov is now fully closed. Sergey is banking that jab. The left hand continues to land. Swings big and misses that time. Good kick on the thigh of Blagoy Ivanov. I don't like to go against the duck. But their right eye is showing a little bit different in his analysis of what's happening in this fight. Well, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? Because if you agree with the duck, you disagree with John McCarthy, and that's... I don't want to argue with either of them. But we all are going to agree that this fight is an amazing fight. Final 10 seconds. Another body shot from Sergey. Oh, good one, too. And a flurry from Lagoy to the final what bell. A fight. What, what a great what fight, fight in the heavyweight <laughs> division. What a fight. Round two, you ready, Blue? Round two, you ready, Red? Let's fight. Masvidal is dancing. Mikhail Dufour is swinging away. Dufour in the green, Burnell in the black. A furious round one, and they pick up right where they left off in round number two. I like how we're just not going to talk about the double slap at the end of the first round. <laughs> but I'm going to just let it keep going. <laughs> Big John McCarthy yes, sir. checking in. Uh, how'd you score round one? I'll tell you what, that was a very tight round, but you really have to look at what is landing. It's not how much you put out, it's what lands and what lands with power. And in the end, I go with Mads Burnell 10-9 based upon he landed the big right hands and the calf kicks, which were the most effective strike. He's on the retreat right now. Mikhail Dufour is throwing everything and the kitchen sink, trying to get Mads Burnell out of there. I think it thinks he hurt Mads, and I didn't see look the hurt. This. He's got that tight. He's got that tight. Oh, oh, Mikhail Dufour, second round submission! What an incredible turn of events! He didn't even control the hips. Randy, I agree with you. He didn't hurt him. I didn't see that he the hurt him. The only shot that hurt him was a body shot, and, I, I, and then that's why he sucked in the, the choke. Clay Collard is in the black trunks. The tricky pit bull Sir, in the you green. Ready? Sir, you ready? Fight! Touch of the gloves. Three five-minute rounds. Six points on the line here in the first round. A finish in the first will put either of these men atop the lightweight standings. Collard trying with the long jabs early. He's also using different motions early. He's circling to the right, circling to the left, moving forward with feints, leg kicks. A stumble on the calf kick there as his feet came back to set. Big commitment on the one-two from the tricky pit bull. We knew about college defense. We seen it on display early on. Right hand by the tricky pit bull. Collard ate that one. Sometimes in camp they call Clay the crimson chin because of his red beard. He's never been knocked out in his career. Calf kick again there from Collard. The tricky offers one back. Low jab by Patricky and then came high with that right hand. And it was shrugged off a bit by Collar. Slip and rip there. Collar trying to counter hook. Just outside the range of Patricky on the counter. Collar doing a nice job of cutting off the ring, keeping Patricky hemmed up against the fence. Nice right hand snuck through the guard for Collar. And Randy, those calf kicks are deposits for later to withdrawals. He's landing those calf kicks to slow down Patricky Pitbull. Yeah. 
Tricky landing here. Collard shrugging it off. Got his hands down. Right hand landed and dropped him. Collard was off balance already. The right hand helped. And now Pitbull swinging away. Feels like he's got Collard hurt. Well, look at Pitbull's eyes. He's looking right at the chin. He's not leaving that laser focus. Nice double leg. Nice roll by Collard and a scramble. Offer some uppercuts. There's, There's his the knees. knees. With a blood over the left eye for Tricky Pitbull. Round one halfway gone. You can see the live odds have this one dead even. Kyle is walking in with his head pretty high. Especially against the shorter opponent, he needs to drop that chin a bit. He does get reckless every once in a while in the interest of trying to generate offense. Might not be able to afford to do that against someone with the power of Pitbull, but beautiful combination for Collard there. Back to the jab in the body. Ian Parker, how do we play this fight? We took Clay Collard here and straight up I went to parlay. And right now, look, he's losing right now. He got dropped. He took a lot of hard shots. But the question is, can Pitbull keep up with that pace if he doesn't get the knockout? Because you know Collard's going to keep coming forward if you can't put him away. But right now, he's landing some hard, hard shots on Clay. This is the people's main event for a reason. And I think this is going to be going on for a little while. Good combination again. Finished with the calf kick. And Collard gets right back to work. There you see him going to the body, something he's very well known for. He started to see the volume increase by Collard. He started to find his rhythm and range. More calf kicks as well. Tricky offers one back. Right hand from Clay Collard. Paused for Tricky Pitbull for a minute, but look at that hook. Good right hand interrupts the forward motion again. There's the knee. <laughs> 45 seconds left. A flurry from Collar. Accuracy from Cassius Clay. A little dirty boxing, Randy. Absolutely. A little clinch work, a little inside fighting. But the output from Collard is really picking up. Big swing and a miss there for Pitbull. Right after that right hand of the body, spinning back fist. Collard backs up Patricky one more time here in round number one. Good movement by the Brazilian. Right, left, to the body. Good right hand from Collard, right to the bell.